In my previous video I gave you a demonstration of a man-in-the-middle attack known as session hijacking and in that demonstration I showed you how even though a website may use HTTPS to protect pages that contain sensitive information that then reverting back to HTTP or loading mixed content can still result in the session ID being vulnerable to a man-in-the-middle and that's one of the purposes of HTTPS is to protect that data in transit by encrypting it so that even if a third party does gain access to it they can't read the information now another purpose of HTTPS is to also ensure the integrity of that data is to ensure that the same third party, the same man in the middle can't actually modify the data whilst it's in transit and what I'm going to demonstrate today is a form of attack known as a code injection attack and I'm actually going to use the same website to demonstrate that so I'm here on the main Rebel Valley site again and I'm actually just going to go ahead and sign in so I'm going to provide my user credentials as normal and sign into the website and here we are on the account page now signed in. Now to the average end user you probably want to realize that your account credentials are actually just being stolen. A man in the middle has actually managed to get access to those credentials and take them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign out and I'm going to go back to the beginning and show you what actually happened here. Now again as I mentioned earlier because this page is loaded over HTTP we can't actually ensure the authenticity of it, we can't ensure its integrity. And to prove that point, if I inspect the element here to look at the link for the signing page, you can see that it's actually been directed away from the Ribble Valley site to my own site. So if we click on that link, you can see here we're now on scotthelm.co.uk and I'm actually hosting a perfect replica of the standard login page. So to the end user, unless they were actually paying attention to this address bar here, they're not, they're not aware of the change. Nothing to them is any different. So again, I'm just going to put my credentials in this form. And I'm just going to use the Chrome developer tools to actually keep an eye on exactly what the browser is doing here. So as I press that sign in button and submit those details, you can see again we're back on the Ribble Valley site and we're signed in. Now if we actually take a look at this, you can see as I press the submit button on that form, the first thing it did was submit a post request to a file called steelcredentials.php which I'm hosting on my site. Now as you can guess, this file is designed to save any credentials that the user has inserted into the form. But then what it's done is it's actually returned a 307 temporary redirect to the browser. Now that basically tells the browser that the page that it's looking for has actually moved elsewhere and that it actually needs to redirect the user to this site. And the site that I'm redirecting it to is the standard Ribble Valley login site. So as you can see, immediately afterwards the browser has resubmitted the same post request to the Ribble Valley site and this is what results in the user actually being logged in. It resubmits exactly the same credentials back to the second site and in that process it's actually taking a copy of them. And what I've also coded in is the ability for it to output the credentials that it's logging as it logs them. So as you can see here, as I've been trying out various things, that it's been logging the credentials of any user that attempts to log in, whether it's successful or not, it takes a copy of the username and password. And just to demonstrate that this is happening in real time, what I'm actually going to do, I'll sign out, and I'm going to sign in again, and I'm just going to make up an email address. So let's say joe at blogs.com is trying to sign in. Now obviously this is going to fail because the credentials aren't real, but if we come back to my script here that's capturing these details every time someone logs in and refresh the page, you can see that it's just captured the latest attempt for somebody to log in. Now all of this stems from the fact that the page is loaded over HTTP and because that data isn't loaded over HTTPS, you can't ensure the integrity of that data. You can't ensure that none of the code has been modified in transit. 